an entire room full of writers, and you did nothing! If you're a true fan of The Sopranos, you'll know who David Chase is. His groundbreaking writing changed the television landscape forever and ushered in a golden age of TV dramas. But he didn't do it alone. Working alongside him was a room full of writers, many of whom would go on to create their own successful shows after The Sopranos ended. David of course deserves the credit not only for being the creator and primary voice behind The Sopranos, but also for inspiring a whole generation of writers. He is without a doubt a genius, but like many geniuses, he could be difficult to work with, and his writing room produced not only drama on the page, but in real life as well for his writers. And not enough people know who these writers are, or the conflicts that went on inside that room. So in this video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the major figures that worked on the show, and hopefully help bring them the attention that they deserve as writers. I'm also a TV writer, which by default makes me a douchebag, but <laughs> you would have figured that out for yourselves in a minute. Before we get started, I wanted to shout out the book Difficult Men by Brett Martin, which was very helpful in researching this video. It details a lot of the history and drama that went on, not only in The Sopranos writing room, but also The Wire, Breaking Bad, and many more shows. If you're interested in television history and behind the scenes details, I would definitely recommend this book. Now, I'm not going to be discussing David Chase in detail in this video, because this is meant to highlight the other writers who helped make The Sopranos what it is. But if you want a detailed background to David and his other works, check out this video that I did on him linked below. Before we get into the writers though, I did want to mention someone who was influential to the show being created. Lloyd Braun. Lloyd was David Chase's entertainment lawyer, and he not only encouraged him to work on a television series, which Chase really didn't want to do at that point, but also gave him the mafia angle that would eventually become The Sopranos. A guy who was working there at that time, Lloyd Braun, gave me this very inspirational speech, and at that time in my life it was pretty hard to inspire me about television because I was really didn't like it. And he said, for example, would you like to do a series about The Godfather? This is, is in the lobby at Bilstein Gray. I said, no, I don't want to do a series about The Godfather, but I do love gangsters. So, but I, so I had this idea in the back of my head, and I thought, I wonder if, we could, if I could make that into a TV series. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, Lloyd also represented other people, including Larry David, the creator of Seinfeld. Larry would create a character named Lloyd Braun in that series, named after the real Lloyd. I guess your mother was right. You never could compete with Lloyd Braun! <laughs> Alright, now let's get into the writers. David of course wrote and directed the pilot episode himself, but after the series got picked up, he needed to hire for his writer's room. Of the group that he hired for the first season, only three would survive his incredibly high standards. Frank Renzulli, Robin Green, and Mitch Burgess. Before writing on The Sopranos, Frank Renzulli had created the show The Great Defender, which starred Michael Rispoli. Frank was the only writer who really knew about how the Mafia functioned, having grown up around these guys, and his experiences were essential for the authenticity of the show. Frank Renzulli, who one of the writers and yeah. crews on the show, grew up in North Boston and uh, was really a neighborhood kid, and so he knew about sort of the financial pyramid that makes up a mob, that makes up mob life, the actual business of it. He did know that. Robin Green and Mitch Burgess are actually a husband and wife writing team. They had previously worked with David on the show Northern Exposure. Robin has an interesting background, having worked both for Marvel Comics as a secretary receptionist for Stan Lee and also as the only female reporter for Rolling Stone in the 70s. Rolling Stone? Fuck if they don't give us a dope smoking peace freak rider. Like I said, these three were the only ones to make it to the second season. The others were let go. One standout of this group though was James Manos Jr., who co-wrote the episode College, which would win him and David Chase an Emmy. He would later go on to write the pilot for the show Dexter, which wound up being a highly successful series. Going into season two, David hired two new writers. One was Terrence Winter, 
whom I'm sure most Sopranos fans will know. Terrence had previously worked with Frank Renzulli on The Great Defender, and had tried to get into the writer's room for season 1, but was too late. However, he would talk with Frank after work about the episodes that he was working on in season 1. So in a way, he had already been working on the show from the very start. So it's funny, years later what David didn't know was once Frank started on The Sopranos, he would call me every day, he'd come home and tell me about the writer's room, what stories they're pitching, and he and I would talk about stories and I'd give him ideas and he started writing scenes and sending them to me and I would, I would give him suggestions and edit and I was kind of writing on The Sopranos but not really. I was sort of working through Frank. Season 2 is also when Michael Imperioli, who plays Christopher on the show, began to write as well. He would go on to write five episodes in total across the seasons. Babe, I can't like give an opinion every time you add a sentence. I gotta have the whole story flow. I'm starting with the dialogue. The final hire was Todd Kessler. Kessler was described as something of a wunderkind, becoming deeply involved with David Chase in not only the writing, but other aspects like editing and being on set. He also became close with Chase personally, there were rumors that David was planning on quitting the show and making Todd the showrunner, though David denies having ever said this. Together they co-wrote the episode Funhouse, which was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Writing, with David writing the first half with the dream sequence and Todd writing the second half when they kill Pussy. However, the day of the nomination, David called Todd into his office to fire him. He said that the scripts he had been turning in were not at an acceptable quality and that it would be better for him if Todd wasn't there anymore. When Todd pointed out that they had just been nominated for an Emmy for his writing, David reluctantly gave him one more chance to turn in a production ready script. Todd would write the season 3 episode Fortunate Son, but was ultimately fired from the show. It's not clear what happened between Kessler and Chase. Maybe Kessler overestimated his relationship with David. Or maybe David didn't like sharing the glory of an Emmy with another writer. For his part, he said that he doesn't remember this incident. Either way, the news was devastating to Todd, who had become a close friend of James Gandolfini. You know, I put everything I had into writing on the show, being on set, being in editing, being in casting, you know, the whole thing. And, you know, ultimately, I guess something just what didn't fully click as we got further into our relationship, me and David. Todd would go on to co-create the show Damages with his brother Glenn. The show revolves around a brilliant but ruthlessly manipulative lawyer and her young naive protege whom she takes advantage of. Kessler has said that the show is at least partially inspired by his experiences working on The Sopranos, and thus the character of Patty Hughes is a commentary on David Chase. I'm so sick of your bullshit. What did you say to me? You heard me. Get out. And don't bother coming back. Season 3 also saw the introduction of Lawrence Koner as a new writer for the team. There's not much information about his time on the show, and he would only write a total of 3 episodes for the series. However, years later, he would end up co-writing The Many Saints of Newark with David Chase, which is an obvious mark of trust. Now, you might wonder why Chase chose to work with him instead of one of the other writers from the show. Well, as we'll see, there weren't many writers left by the time the show ended. In Season 3, Frank Renzulli also left the show. Supposedly, he didn't like the direction that Chase was taking the characters, and he didn't feel the show was being authentic to real-life mafiosos. There also seemed to be some personal conflict between the two, as Frank's talkative personality, among other issues, really got under David's skin. And as you can see, I'm a kiakero. Once I start talking, you gotta fucking hit me with a pipe. And I saw right away that really irritated. <laughs> really fucking irritated. There were no major changes to the writing team in season four, but season five saw the addition of Matt Weiner. Weiner got the job in part due to David being impressed with a pilot script he had written. We'll get into this more later, but that pilot was of course the famous Mad Men script. Tony Kalem, who played Angie Bompensero, also got to write an episode of Season 5. Season 6 saw the introduction of Diane Frolov and Andrew Schneider. 
Like Robin and Mitch, they were also a husband and wife writing team, and they had also worked with Chase on Northern Exposure. They actually wrote four episodes of season six, which is quite a lot considering that they were new to the show. However, this was most likely due to Robin and Mitch being fired from the show. Despite having worked with David the longest out of any of the writers, David had begun to grow frustrated with them. He said that it was like they were regressing, understanding the show and the characters less as time went on. They actually wrote another episode for season 6 with Tony in the hospital, but their episode ended up getting cut. Ultimately, David fired them from the show. Robin and Mitch would go on to create the show Blue Bloods for NBC, which has run for 14 seasons and is wrapping up its final season this year. However, it seems that they were only involved in the first season and were let go of due to creative differences early on. With Robin and Mitch gone, Terrence Winter and Matt Weiner would become David's core team. Together, they would write almost the entirety of season 6B. It should be no surprise then that when The Sopranos ended, they would go on to create their own shows using the lessons that they had learned from their time on The Sopranos. Winter would go on to create Boardwalk Empire for HBO, a show set in Atlantic City during Prohibition. The series would run for five seasons and star many Sopranos alumni. HBO actually pitched Winter the idea based on a book that they wanted to adapt, and Martin Scorsese was brought on very early on as a director and executive producer. Essentially, Terrence didn't have to work very hard to get the show off the ground, as everyone was eager to work with him. Getting actors interested was not that hard, I think. You know, it was a question of availability and do they want to do series, but do you want to be on an HBO show, you know, directed by Martin Scorsese? You know, like beating people off with, with sticks in, in some cases. Weiner's journey was a little different. His pilot script for Mad Men had become legendary at this point, having pitched it to every major network and been rejected. Even HBO, despite David Chase's encouragement, refused to make the show. Now, there are many reasons why this might have happened, which I'll get into more detail when I do my Mad Men retrospective. But one reason might have been Matt's difficulty to work with. Reportedly, many people on The Sopranos hated working with him, as he could be a kiss-ass to those above him like Chase, and a bully to those beneath him. It's been long rumored that the reason Carolyn Strauss, the president of HBO, refused to even read the Mad Men script was because she never wanted to work with Matt again. I got, it got me my job on The Sopranos about two years later, and that literally within a, a month, days of being there, David Chase sent it to HBO with a note on the top of it that said, this should be your show after The Sopranos is over. And that was the last I heard from HBO. <laughs> Ultimately, Mad Men would land at AMC, a network which had never created original programming at that point. Their inexperience meant that they just had to trust Matt's vision and expertise. This gave him unparalleled power over the creative process that would almost certainly never happen again for another showrunner. Mad Men would run for seven seasons, winning AMC many awards and critical acclaim, though it would be perpetually overshadowed in the public by AMC's other new show, Breaking Bad. This brings us to the end of all the major figures behind the show. However, I did want to give a shout out to all the other writers I didn't get a chance to mention. Mark Saraceni, Jason Cahill, Joe Basso, Salvatore J. Sabil, Nick Santora, David Flabot, and Michael Calio. These writers don't necessarily have stories or dramas worth including in this video, but regardless of how short their time on the show might have been, they still contributed to the show's success, no matter how small. So when you write on TV, what do you have, like one guy writes the words for Dylan McDermott and one guy writes for Nicholson's girlfriend? Is that the way it is? You write it all yourself. Oh, interesting. Overall, I hope I've given you some insight into the creative process behind The Sopranos. People don't tend to pay too much attention to the writers of shows like they do other forms of media. But I think it's important to give credit to the people behind the page. For all the mistakes, conflicts, and personal dramas behind the scenes, The Sopranos was a triumph that they should all be proud of, and I hope this video brings them some much deserved publicity. Thank you all so much for watching, and stay tuned for more Sopranos content coming soon.
They pawned all those Emmys for drug money, by the way. Matt Joyce, Uncle Mike, Sam Cedarland, Celery Man, Countess Von Zarevich, Admiral, Neil Varma, and Juan Jaramillo. 